Elisha, may God be pleased with her. The first innovation did us to appear after God's emissary died was that people would eat their fill. And when the people's bellies were sated, their souls bolted with them into the things of the world. They just indulge in the world. Hakka the face Bid'a Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha warda says, with satiation. And in, in, in an extended version of the statement to Sayyidina Aisha, she says the first three bid'ahs in the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, the first of them was to eat upon tables, she said. And look at the first bid'ah, the first way the Ummah strayed from the way of the Prophet وسلم, they started to eat upon tables, the great woman radiallahu anha warda says. What does, that facil- what, you, what does that facilitate? It facilitates the opening up of the digestive tract. I, when you sit in a specific way, the stomach opens up. And then you eat more than is necessary. That's why we see every way that the Prophet Sallallahu would sit, it's all about contracting his digestive tract Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every single way, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is sitting. And that's why it's makru for somebody for instance, to sit like this and eat. Why? Because the tract opens up. And so thereby sitting up on the table face bid'ah, because you're going to eat more than what is necessary. Then she says the second bid'ah was this, was satiation. Thereby people would eat to their fill. She said, And then she said the third bid'ah was now toilets inside of houses. Because you need quick recourse. You can't be going outside the Medina to answer the call to nature. As was in the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Look how pure Medina it is. Like human feces does not exist in the land of Medina Tabunawara in the age of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi They have to go beyond the city. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum wardahum. MashaAllah, yeah, they bless it. Radiallahu anhum wardahum. But Aisha said that's quickly going to be removed once you see issues of the tabi'een and the influx into Medina to Munawara. That's why thereafter, those look at the likes of Imam Malik ibn Anas. Like the Sahaba are not necessarily praised. Radiallahu anhum wardahum for never were answering the call to nature inside of Medina. Because everybody did that. But that's going to soon slip as Aisha radiallahu anha wardaha says. Until like the age of Malik, Imam Malik is praised because he never answered the call to nature in Medina. Imam Malik, which shows you now things have changed by the age, the third, the third generations of the Muslims, the age of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Dar al-Hijr anhu wardaha. And so the fifth and greatest benefit, it lies in the breaking of all one's desire for sin. Has to be the greatest benefit, isn't it? And if, if hunger, by virtue of hunger, you're able to break the actual resolve of al Rabisu, of this sort of lower element of the human being, the gut of the human being, that which commands us to evil, if you're able to break it through hunger, then hunger is mamduh, mashallah, tabarakallah. Because once we break sin, then mashallah, tabarakallah. That is now the beginning of gnosis and ascension in degrees to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, it's always commanding to evil. Now, as we made mention of, your objective is to break it. To turn it from a voice that commands you to evil to a voice that is more so conscious of the fact that what sin is not going to be in one's best interest. I mean, we've got to convince our lower self that look, like you are, are me and I am you, Yali. I mean, we've got to like work together upon this, Yali. I mean, I, like here, the higher. Yeah, Imam al-Ghazal, in, in, again, we always refer him back to in his, in his marvels of the heart. When he speaks about the human being, look, he'll speak about, you know, the, the goat. Which is what, which he calls kuwa to shahwa. This was speaking of the same thing, and the faculty of desire, the, the, the faculty of appetite. Then he'll speak about ghadab. He'll speak of the issue of anger and the kuwa al ghadab. Then he'll speak about the issue of what of the mind, kuwa al aql, kuwa al aql. These three faculties. I remember what Imam Al Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, is positing is that the objective is to bring those three faculties into a state of equilibrium. And you bring them into a state of equilibrium by virtue of another faculty, the fourth faculty, which is called Quwwat al Adl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a faculty, and it's a faculty that no doubt manifests physically, as you'll hear in Jiu Jitsu, as we were hearing yesterday in the issue of archery, as you'll hear in horses, of balance. And somebody was off balance, yeah, it's all, all about balance. You know, I remember when Nisar was showing the issue of, of him, of him, Ustad Nisar was showing the issue of him, the grappling issue, you know, how to, how to escape. And one thing that was going through the fakir's mind is that, is, is that when a person moves out of the center line, that's what going through mind, when he's outside of the center line, that's your disadvantage. You've always got to keep him inside of the center line. And the point we're trying to make is the issue of balance, Yanni. I mean, that's where dominance comes. So when the human being is off balance, okay, but inwardly, it's more so important. If your desire is off balance, mushkila. If your anger is off balance, mushkila. 
If your intellect is off balance, mushkila. And the only thing that centralizes the inward reality of the human being, wahyun yuha. It's revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's important. You cannot centralize yourself. You cannot bring yourself into a state of balance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created al mawazin bil qis. He created everything, all of the balances in equity. They're all balanced. In aqim al wazna bil qis. That's what Allah Ta'ala says. So establish the balance in justice. I mean, fairly. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَلَا تُخْسِرُ الْمِيزَانِ And never disturb the balance. Allah Jalla fil Ula instructs each and every single one of us. And so the, 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 the ideal of the religion is how do we bring ourselves into a state of balance. جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةُ الْوَسَطَ That we made you a balanced nation. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَ عَلَى النَّاسِ because you have a muhimma, we have a muhimma, all of us have a muhimma. And we have a reason that Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala, Shaykh Jamal, last night was speaking about that, chosen. Tayyip, if you've been chosen, why? Why has Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen you? And of the reasons we, quote unquote, have been chosen is because we have to bring people to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only reason he created the entire universe for it to be brought to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by virtue of us bringing people to him, remember, only the humans and the jinn are the ones who disturb the balance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. The rest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, in its seemingly infinite amount, is all, mashallah, maintaining the balance. Illa ana wa iyak. Can you imagine, except you and I, and every time we sin, that's disturbing the balance that Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think Allah ta'ala created you to disobey him? You think Allah ta'ala created you to contradict his law? That's why you were created? You think that Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala created you so you can do whatever you want? You were created to do his bidding subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, لِتَكُونَ شُهَدَى عَلَى nas, So that you may become witnesses against people. We, you, I, we need to be balanced, balanced, balanced people. Okay, but you cannot be balanced when the nafs is running a buck. So long as you have an eye, you're off center. That's it. You're, so long as there's an eye, Anna, because that, that, there you are now in the sunnah of the first act of rebellion, the first being to rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who was shaitan al regime. Anna, that was his way. Anna, khairun minhu. I, 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 I'm better than him. That's the way he said about our forefather Adam alayhi salam. And so now the muhimmah of the human being restore the balance. But note, and we stress note, and we stress note, balance is only restored through wahi. This religion, it, the balance, the fulcrum of the religion, wahyun yuha. It's revelation that comes from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That seems clear, and for some of us it may seem simple, but that is extremely difficult to the organism that is called man. Because it's like every single atom, it's just a test. Every single atom is trying to go against the principle of wahi. Uh, so we must submit. Isn't it Abdurrahman, isn't it? Ah, we must submit. That's why, you know, like, like Allah bless Habib, he brought the point in the Mawlid yesterday, Abdurrahman. He listens to Abdurrahman, isn't it? Because Abdurrahman doesn't, he's, he's trying to think that he doesn't want to submit people. Submission is not good. Submission is the best thing that can happen to you in martial arts, isn't it? That's the state you want to be in. You have to learn from the state of being submitted. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. You with, you with it? Mm -hmm. We all good now. Abdul Rahman with it. We want to be in a perpetual state of submission. We want to understand what it means that there's nothing I ultimately can do about the situation that I'm in. Yeah, and remember, creation is just a means to understand the reality of the Creator. Like when a man submits you, that's not him. If you think it's him, then you've missed the point. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in that predicament. And so learn from the predicament that he put you in subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we embrace, and we embrace the ghalib, we embrace the maghloob, we embrace dominance, but likewise we also embrace being dominated, mashallah, tabarakallah. Now we're, we're st studying with our sisters, the issue of, of, of rujul, of manhood and, and womanhood. They say a man, you know, a, 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 men have two domains. They have the domain of the house and the domain of beyond the house. And they say, a man inside of the house is maghloob. He is dominated. He submits in the house. He's maghloob. But when he goes out of the house, abadan. 
That's the nature of Rajul Ayani. You get the point? He has just these two, these two balances, mashallah, tabarakallah, that he's trying to keep in equilibrium. Huh? The state of being dominated and the state of dominating. Huh? The nature of Rajula, they make mention of. But we must dominate our lower passion. That's just the point. Like we have to go to war upon it. And we have to understand it is an enemy. And the only way we can effectively combat it is revelation. And revelation, the first point of impact of revelation, the mind. Okay, that's the mind right there. That's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nur, Nurun ala Nur, light upon light. As Fakhadin al-Razi rahimahullah ta'ala says, Wahyun ala al-Aqal. It's when revelation truly impacts the human mind. And on the basis of revelation impacting the human mind, then the mind can set to work inside of the citadel of the body. Okay, the citadel of man. And the first port of call, anger. It must control anger, okay? Because are you going to use, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He never got angry, li nefse. You get the point? Because either this dominates anger or this dominates anger. One or the other. You get the point? It's either coming downwards or it's coming upwards. And you want it to move down. You want dominance moving down, okay? Imam Ghazali makes mention of. Okay, otherwise, revelation does not impact the intellect. Impact doesn't intellect impact anger, and anger thereby controls the nafs. And that's the purification of the nafs right there. Otherwise, Imam Ghazali calls it coup d'etat. Now, we all understand what coup d'etat is, isn't it? <laughs> he calls it coup d'etat. I.e., when there's, the intellect now is not functioning by virtue of revelation, so it's the nafs that is impacting anger, and then using anger now as insurrection against the human mind, okay? And that's when there's what? That the, the citadel is in a state of disarray. And so the fifth, he said the tool, what he's saying, the tool here we can use in that regard is hunger, okay, hunger. Hunger is going to wear down, wear down the actual Amara Basu and the lowest type of nafs, as we said, until it begins to ascend in degrees, it's going to become a conscience, nafs al-lawama, and it's great because Allah Ta'ala swears by it, la uqusimu, swears by it. And then if we begin to sort of understand the nafs al lawama, the supreme internal critic, and thereby we can move to a state of mutama'inna. We can move to a state of absolute serenity and tranquility with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and all that he decides, Jalla Jalala Wa Ta'ala Ta'ala Ma'ala. Never have I eaten my fill without them committing or wishing to commit some sin. And those type of statements, just take them as a, as like, as a benchmark. You know, when you eat your fill, just think about what's going on inside of you. Try to listen to the voices inside you. Maybe you'll find yourself that it's something internal, that it's a desire to sin. It's just desire. Maybe some of people who are even weaker after they've eaten their fill, not just a desire to sin, but shuf. They'll actually go and enact the sin in and of itself. And so the noon, radiallahu anhu, warda, like look, look at one of the noon, radiallahu anhu, he has it like a beautiful statement, the imam, I'm sure there's sensitivity. He says, radiallahu anhu, warda, you know, sometimes like, like in, in, in like maybe I'm giving jujitsu as a common example. In jujitsu, you know, sometimes you're tired, you feel a bit weak and it's maybe not normal. It's not like you're weaker than normal. Why? You may attribute it to the fact that oh, I never slept last night or I never had all my proteins. And you're going to attribute it to some other thing. The noon says, whenever I find a, like a weakness in my body, I know that I've spoken about something that doesn't concern me. You see, he connects it somewhere else to the level of the spirit. Something has gone wrong spiritually when I find a feebleness inside of my body. And likewise, he's telling you here, the Noon al-Misri, rahimahullah ta'ala, that never have I eaten my fill, which with the likes of the Noon al-Misri is going to be rare, but never have I eaten my fill, save that I can feel the intent to sin. Because the Amar of Isu is now being strengthened. It's commanding you to evil, and he's sensitive to it. He can hear the voice. So the intent to sin is there, even weaker. Then maybe some type of contradiction, some type of sin will manifest upon the limbs. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for safety and security now.